today we're going to be travelling the line from Ditton Junction all the way through to St Helens. This includes an eastward trip to Witness South, then we're going to be heading north up the branch line all the way to St Helens. This was a very industrial area and there's a lot of things to show you. So let the show begin. So here we are at Ditton Junction. Disused. All the infrastructure still here. No sign of passengers. As you can see, this is a very big station. Look at it, it's got six platforms and they're all intercity status. So this was an interchange so you could go to Liverpool, London, Chester, Crewe, Manchester, but most importantly we could take the St. Helens line, which had a lovely nickname of called the Ditton Dodger. Look at it. Oh, it's, it's a shame really, because it's in the middle of nowhere, but it was just strategically placed where, like you say, passengers could change from one service to another. So, like I say, that's the way we'll be going shortly to witness. But this was shut in 1973, but look at it. It's as if it was shut last year. These were station buildings. So let's go to our next station which is Witness South. Well, here we are at Witness South Station. This station opened in 1870, closed to passengers in 1962. It had two services, one to St Helens which will be going down there was another one that went to Garston and Warrington. I'm afraid there's no signs of this station at all. But uh, if you look ahead, where the trees are, you'll hopefully see where the engine shed was. So where them trees are is the engine shed, and we'll be going to the right. There used to be a line to the right that went underneath this current railway line. That's the line that will take us to St Helens. Just after the trees, there was also a little station called... And Street Station. So unfortunately we won't be able to trace the line now until we get to Farnworth and Bold because it's now been taken over by the Mersey Gateway Road Network. So whilst we're travelling up this track I'll give you a quick history of what it was all about. It was originally called the St Helens and Runcorn Gap Railway. This was opened in 1833 mainly to take coal from the docks to the uh, industry. The passengers came into effect from 1852. That was from Runcorn Gap through to St. Helen Station. So we stopped here because this was the location of Appleton Railway Station. It was just a basic station but it served the uh, local community. On the left there there used to be an Appleton sawmill that had its own sidings. When the LNWR took over this route, they rearranged the layout. They wanted it to connect with the rest of the network. That's why they built that underpass to join at uh, Widnes South. And by doing so, they, they were unable to connect the service which ran literally to the end from Ditton Junction all the way through to St. Helens. There were one or two extra halts added and it did prove pretty effective. Unfortunately the war knocked them back and in 1951 is when the last passenger train ran. But the line was still an active line. It was a very useful link for the freight service coming off the docks. So here we are approaching Farnworth and Bold station. So we come to that first station. This is the location of Farnworth and Bold Railway Station. This is where the road will finish and the rail will restart again. So let's see if we can find it mate. So here we are guys, we're finally on the railway track. 
Uh, it looks like it's a cycle lane at the moment, so don't think we'll be finding many clues at this end. I've been told there's some crackers coming up, so watch this space. Yeah, we're just a little further down. I found some of these old stumps, you know, used for storage. But more importantly, a, a brick structure. Was this a uh, signal box or a gatehouse? Doesn't look anything significant nearby. We've not even really started the trip yet. And so we approach our first railway bridge that's going underneath Warrington Road. So I'm just got a bit further up from that uh, Warrington Road and there used to be a halt here. It was called Union Bank Farm Halt. I suspect it was in the very early days because it doesn't appear on the Victoria maps. I usually overlay but it is marked on the uh, national system. So this bank is pretty big but no signs of any platforms. Looks like it's been well gone. Well this is where it was. As I say, we've been walking about half a mile now and it's just a straight through track. As you see a nice avenue of trees both sides. But it will get very urban very soon. Watch this space. And so we approach our second bridge. We're pretty close now to a place called Clock Face. Oh dear, looks like our track bed's become a riverbed. Doesn't look like it lasts for too long, but let's keep going and see where it leads. As you can see, it's still a riverbed, so uh, we'll take the high road. Hopefully it'll come to an end soon. Here we are, back on dry land. So back on the route again. Yeah, and that's where it's going to. As you can see, it's getting a bit greener. But you can clearly make out where the lines went. Straight through the middle there. Lovely. Yeah, one or two railway bits and bobs lying around. That's where we've just been. That's where we're heading. And just beyond that house, hopefully, is Clockface Station. And here we have the line, now becoming a housing estate. All the way up, all the way in line with the railway. Shame. Another piece of history lost. So this is the location of Clock Face Railway Station. It used to go underneath this road. And if you look at them new houses behind it, that is a line of the railway. So it came under this road and went on. That's where hopefully we'll be tracing it. Well, I just got back on the track again. It looks like it's some kind of a horse stable or something. Very strange. Well, that's the route we're going. So, just come past that uh, horse place. Not the easiest of walks. And in this really rugged area now that looks like it hasn't been touched. You see the fence there on the edge. This is where the track was. It's all concrete slabs, old sleepers, concrete sleepers as well. Wow. God help me, this is the way ahead. Oh my goodness. Get out the hatchet or what? Out the wilderness and here we are, back on the ballast. Following the line, bring it on. Ooh. So that's our journey ahead. I'd say we're about, I'd say about half a mile out of clock face. And this is big, large siding. Looking back on clock face now, on the left hand side, looks like there were several sidings, holding sidings. It's, it is, it's pretty wide even though it's pretty swampy. So certainly some sidings here, but no real signs other than the space. Yeah, just look at the expanse around here. It's massive. You can certainly tell there was plenty of railway, uh, railway activities around here. This pathway just goes on and on and on. You should try this, this is a wonderful walk. Just before we get to what used to be the glassworks, come across this amazing bridge. Look at this. Talk about preserved. This is nice. This would normally be fenced off and everything, but wow, access all areas. Let's have a close look. 
I'm not going to walk on that section because it looks dodgy as hell, but wow, look at it, it's still there. And if you look further over, you can see there used to be several bridges here. In fact, this used to be a major, major siding. This was very close to a junction that would take you onto an alternative track. In fact, this is the location of the, um, the glass works. So they used to have their own personal sidings that went into there. And a bit further up, there was a spur that went onto the LNWR storage space. See if I can get any more clues on that. Wow, preserved in time or what? So just behind that tree, just clipping the end of this building, there was a siding that went off literally at 90 degrees to the LNWR General Stores and Sheeting Works. Looks like I may just be able to crawl through that. And as if by magic, it all opens up again. Lovely. Let's see what clues are around here. Oh dear, we met with some carnage. And a rickety fence. I think this next bridge is out. That's where we're heading for next. That's a heavy zoom looking over this housing estate which has now taken over the route like i say i'm still on that bridge and there's no way that i am going to be able to get down there so it looks like i'll have to backtrack and find a way out so as you can see we're nearly back on track so the line used to go across here over this railway that's still existing but you can see yourself there was a line on this alternative route going over this lovely original cast iron bridge. Let's get an aerial shot from up there. So where you can see all these houses, this is where the LNWR plant used to be. And straight ahead there is the route of the railway line. This was a big, big, big organisation. It had a link from the line we were just we were walking. It also had links from this line down below. And if you look in the background on this heavy zoom, that is the location of St. Helens Junction. It veered off to the left. Just about see it. Where the LNWR works was, and the station is up ahead. That's where she is, and like I say, it branched off to the left to a load of sidings before making a similar approach to what we're going to be making to go into St. Helens. Right, let's get back on track. As you can see, this route is well walked, so come on, guys, give it a go. This area is marked as Sutton Incline Plain. Don't know if that was a siding or a, a works or whatever, but looks like it did have an industrial purpose. Right, so this is the point where the junction from St. Helens meets up with our line. Apparently at this stage there was three lines. There was line, well two lines that went to the junction and then the main line our main line that went through the middle and then they all converged together before the next bridge. I can't see any markings of the track yet but early days yet. Let's check it out. Ooh, a few abutments ahead. Looks like we've got a bit of investigating to do. I think the line was here. It went underneath our line and most probably converged and met up on the other end. So let's get a shot from the other angle, a lower level. So here's that bridge from the lower level. So like I say, that is the line that came from St. Helens Junction going to St. Helens. Well, it couldn't join our line effectively. So it went underneath our line, which was there, that went over. Then, like I say, it went up the hill to join us again. But there was another line over there that just literally joined on. It didn't need a bridge to go under because it didn't, didn't swap. So as you can see, with the ballast, I'm now looking back at St. Helens Junction. It came through here, 
didn't go under the bridge, this is the one on the other side, then went up there where they all merged together. Let's get to the upper level again. Here I am on the upper level, now I'm on the other side. This is where the other track came, like I say it was on the lower level and it will meet us eventually further up the line. Uh, it does state there was a station on this, this particular section, so I wonder if this was two tracks. So just approaching the bridge now, looking back on myself, like I say that's one of the St. Helens, this is our middle road, the other one was in that bramble still. But you can see they're all coming up to the same height as each other now. And here we are ready to cross that road. Look at the ricketiness on this, not seen it as bad as this since we did the, um, the Glazebrook run. But oh, still standing, testimony in itself. And this is where the St. Helens crossed. Yeah, certainly very oldy world bricks. And look at the ironwork on that, lovely. That's how rickety it is. Don't worry, I'm not going another inch forward. That is your limit. And this is the bridge on the other side. This is going to join up with our master bridge, which is here. But, if you look down at the bottom there, See, looks like there's a doorway. Wonder if this is the location of that station I was telling you about. I'll have a close look on that. And there's that second bridge, looking it from the other way. Yeah, that halt I was talking about is called Robin's Lane Halt, and it's literally there. So it certainly makes sense that the staircase would come straight from the bridge. Can't find any clues though, it looks like well filled in and disused a long time ago. And so we slowly make our way to Sutton Oak Junction where the three lines will finally meet. And just as we clear one barrier, another one appears. Yep, nice old rickety wooden bridge again. But like I say, we're still on three lines, but they're very close now. I've got one bridge, I've got two bridge, and I've got three bridge over there. And they're all going to meet in a junction any second now. So this is the location of Sutton Oak Junction. All the lines have now merged into one. Ish. So where this place is at the moment is the original location of the Sutton Glassworks. This is where it was and it had loads of sidings. I can say that Sutton Glassworks was a massive place. We're not even halfway down yet. But yeah, the track is beating nature at the moment. This ballast is keeping it at bay. Like some kind of an old stone structure. Ouch! How the hell am I meant to get through that? Wow, 20 minutes later we're through the other side. That was painful. Right, so we're literally at the end of the glassworks now, and you guess it, there's another barrier ahead. And so we come to the site of Sutton Oak Station. Sutton Oak Station is just ahead, just ahead of this bridge here. Like I say, we're at Sutton Oak Station now. Look at all these bricks. Look at them all. I cannot find any signs of the station yet. But there's loads of railway bricks, which is a good sign that there was definitely something here. Yeah, definitely a railway here. Whoa, look at it. Strewn everywhere. The only thing we can't find is an actual platform itself. Or can we? Hard to make out, but I think this is the platform, you know. Very straight. And it's at the right level and all. Definitely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Right, let's keep moving. There you go, that's looking back at the station. Nice. So that's the next part of the journey. Apparently there was a line that came in from the uh, left hand side along the edge there and joined up around this point. I suspect it was a mineral line or something just coming off one of the factories but that's where it was. 
Again, this stuff here just littered everywhere and everywhere. Loads of bricks very close to the track. This being one of the track lines, that being the second track line, the main track line that we're walking. But these two ran in parallel to each other. A few relics lying around. And look at all them for the uh, signalling. You can see how deep this is. And this was all for the sidings that served the Sutton Glassworks. It looked like it had a lot of traffic in its day. And a lot of private sidings. And this looks like where the track will begin. Oh, what little track there is. Ooh, it looks a bit swampy but it's walkable. That'll do for me. So this is where the running track begins. Oh, look at this place. You think it was a recycling place? Look at all these bottles. This is absolutely disgusting. Come on Merseyside, sort yourself out. Nice bridge. Yeah, I love this oldie world brick. Excellent. Well, here we are just underneath the bridge. And there's a famous landmark. That is Morrison's. No, not Morrison's landmark. That is where the engine shed used to be. The engine shed here at St. Helens. Very nice. Yeah, so we're still walking the length of that Morrison's engine shed. But on this side, on the other side, there used to be a brickworks, Sutton Oak Brickworks. Had its own personal sidings and everything. So you can see we're getting pretty industrial at the moment. Let's see if we can find any railway infrastructure. So there's some of the original brickwork that ran alongside the brickworks. There's the track. As you can see, we're just at the end now of the engine shed. Let's keep going. So I've come a pretty fair way down, and that wall is still holding out. As are these rails. And like you say, this is where the uh, all the lines merged into one right at the bottom of Morrison's car park to rejoin the line. Well, luckily we haven't got any trees so you can see how far the yard went out. So as you say, that's all coming off the engine shed, all meeting up as one. Strange. Answers on a postcard. Oh dear, looks like we temporarily lost the track. If we can find it on the other side. I suspect it's under all this rubbish. I was going to swear then, because it smells as well. Right, let's check it out. Phew, there she is, under all that bramble. Aren't we glad it's spring, eh? Eee, let's keep on going. Yeah, this is what I like to see. Look at this. Man versus nature. Who's going to win? I'll tell you who. Nature, every time. And so the track splits. We have a point. Uh, and that was where she leads ahead. What do I say every trip, eh? We always find one of these lying on a railway track somewhere. Right, so it looks like we're onto two tracks now. So this must be the final approach leading into St. Helens. So here we are at Peasley Cross Station. I don't think we're going to see many clues here. Why I say that is because they built an extra bridge. The original stone bridge is in the background, but there's been a concrete one added. And that was where the platforms and everything was for Peasley Cross. I'll keep walking, hopefully we'll find something whilst I am walking. But don't hold your breath. Certainly nothing on the track level side. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, you may be able to see some kind of a retaining wall up at the top. That might have been the old station uh, edging or whatever. But nothing by the track, I'm afraid. There's a quick look back on that station. 
Look at this gem. Beautiful. Well, look at that last picture. I think we're about half a mile away now from St. Helens. Uh, look at this, uh, this new bridge. I wonder if that was originally an old lattice type bridge. And they've replaced it with this modernish one. Yeah, that speaks for itself. You can see the oldie world one that's attached to the modern bit that goes over. And as you can see ahead, the two lines become one. Yeah, apparently this was called Ravenhead Junction. See the stadium behind us so you know we're getting very close. But there, just beyond here, hopefully we'll find some signs of where there was what I would call an avoiding line. As you can see there was a lot of lines here once and this is exactly what I wanted to show you. you know it's a line now how it's curving. Right, so like I say this is the, uh, the line that goes into St Helens Station. In fact there were three stations once you know. Three stations. Out. We're going pretty close to all three so I'll point them out as we pass. But originally there was also a line that went straight up there to avoid everything. So if you didn't want to go to St Helens you know it's on freight and everything that is the route you would have taken. And this shows you, look at it, all the way up there, follow that ballast, that's the avoiding line. Fortunately that avoiding line has been destroyed, it's now a big factory space, blah blah blah. Power line still stands, look we've got two routes, look at the turrets on that bridge in the background, that gives it away. Back to where you're looking at the stadium now, that used to be a copper works in its time, and again, surprise surprise, that had loads of side inks. So at least the land's been utilised and used for something more practical now. But uh, railways are slowly decaying away as you can see. Ooh, sleepers still in situ. The beauty of these concrete ones, they'll never decay. If you look straight ahead, we're going to get our two lines back again. Nice. wonder why they split them in the first place. So it's just sporadic now. Bit of track, then it's not a bit of track, and then there is. So this is the line that we're walking at the moment. But on the left here we have what we call Ravenhead Branch. On the Ravenhead Branch is where the location was for the first St. Helens Station. This was opened in 1833, but only lasted till 1849. This was also used for the copper works. This is how you got into it from the back. Wow. Nice to know these uh, old telephone boxes have got new uses. Yeah, not, no one's using it at the moment, mind you. And there's that avoiding bridge. Another one that went to Copper Place. I think this is the final curve coming into... Uh, St. Helens. We should be going over one main road, then we should see the main junction ahead. That's the jungle we've just been through. Looks a bit clearer ahead, thank God for that. Oh my God. Any of you lot in the mood for a litter pick? If so, just do so outside St. Helens. This is disgusting. How long you'd be waiting at that signal to get it clear? Uh. There she is. Nice weight bow and all. And what are you all about, eh? I ain't near the track. I'm not sure. So here we have on the final section as we come round the curve and this is where there was also a spur that went to St Helens number 2 station. This opened from 1849 but only lasted till 1858 in which case then they had another expansion. I expect this is how they controlled that one semaphore that we saw before. Look how many it used to have. You always get them beauties near the junctions don't you? As you can see overhead, you can see where we're going to join on with the lines. 
At this point there used to be two signal boxes, one controlling one side, one controlling the other, just before we reached the main stations. And if you want a five star stay here at St Helens, this is the place to come. A uh, Railway Royale, bridge number two. And there she is, the final approach. Originally, the track used to go to the left to St. Helens Station number three. This was open from 1858 till 1871. And so we come to the fourth station to don the name St. Helens, but this was the first station that was a through station. All the other stations we mentioned earlier were all spurs that came to a dead end. So as regards that third station, this is where it was located. So like I say, they expanded the railway network and they wanted a through platform, and so this is where it was located. This was renamed Shaw Street in 1949. Well, look at all these, eh? All the potential this station used to have. Look at it now. Just looking at this station, it looks like it has been remodelled. Looks like we did originally have lines going onto our route, and that may be one of the original uh, platforms. So that's a uh, nipping round back to Widnes.